Continuing our Azadi conversations, we are joined by uh, the former Lieutenant Governor of Puducherry and also former IPS officer, very celebrated and uh, somebody who's very, very strongly, uh, has very strong opinions on what who, our role as, a, as an individual is for our country, our dharma is for our country. Kiran Bedi ji. Kiran ji, namaste. Thank you very, very much. Happy Independence Day. And uh, we, we had a bit of a conversation on an Owl Woman's panel that we are there and we're taking that Azadi conversation forward here. So let me first ask you uh, some questions which we missed that day and some things which I wanted you to share with our viewers here. So we're taking that conversation on a one-on-one -on -one basis. What does the tricolor mean to you? And what should it mean to every Indian? You know, for me, the tricolor is the most sacred thing. It's my honor. It's my prestige. It's my value system. It's my sense of security. It's my pride. I believe the national flag is the biggest asset of any nation. And that's why it's always held high. It's always held high. And the greatest honor is when you dip it. So I think that's what it means to me is the most sacred thing. It's the most sacred thing a nation can possess. There is a difference in how uh, your generation or or perhaps the generation that came through post Azadi and the first two, three decades of strife. And now this generation that is largely the millennials, 90s onwards. Is there a difference in the way we perceive the tricolor to them? And what should the tricolor mean for the generation that is going to take India into the next 25 years, that is still when we turn 100? During my generation, we were seeing, feeling, and living. And closer to the movement. We were closer to the stories of freedom fighters. We were closer to stories of the people who had sacrificed their lives for the nation. The, those unsung heroes we're talking about today, we're discovering them daily. I noticed that unsung heroes are being discovered every day. The All India Radio, the Doodarshan, Darshan and the televisions are discovering them. We lived them. We saw them. We heard many of them to the freedom fighters. So we were so close. We were rubbing shoulders with freedom fighters. So we were living the flag. We were fluttering it, singing every day. The nation is that the following generations have drifted further away. Now the question is, we had a hiatus, we had a gap. If that kind of continuity had been remained, <clears throat> there would have been a similar sentiment, the, way, the anger we have, or the emotional connect we have to the flag. And you see, that's why you wanted to bring National Anthem in the cinema halls. Why? Because people had forgotten, forgotten, particularly in the non-Hindi speaking states, it was Hindi National Anthem. And they didn't know. And they had to fumble or they had to mumble. Because I saw it. Not that they were less patriotic, but they did not know it. They were not being taught enough or they were not singing enough. So assemblies did not sing and they did not, they did not hear. So with the result that they drifted away. That is why we were so close. We were the anvil, which was we were a very uh, that. So I think that's what. And gradually it's got drifted away. And that's why even in cinemas, many youth are questioning why there's a need. Whereas we would never question why would I sing the national anthem? Why would I fly my trickler? So I think that's it. It's a generational shift because we did not continue to invest into these value systems. We did not continue with this gratitude feeling, how we got our freedom. The history of freedom was replaced by, all these stories of freedom were replaced by other stories, which were all entertainment, all entertainment and pleasure and fun, a lot of joy, certainly. But along with it, this did not continue. The roots did not continue. So we got drifted away from our roots. Somewhere it all comes down to education. It comes down to schools. So, so is it important that we start doing some of those things which were done soon after Azadi or the first three, four decades? We start revisiting them again, trying to bring back the national anthem, fly the tricolor, not just two days in a year, but regularly. Get everybody to learn the Rashtra Geet and the Rashtra Gaan. Somewhere bring this connect. Do, do you feel that, that uh, that's important or are there other ways to do this? Community sure. service, for instance, or you know, one year of national service or, or however you want to see that's great. I think many of us also did NCC till NSS came. Now, NCC brought in a lot of sense of uh, love for the flag, respect for the flag. 
And those students who were across the nation, across the regions, got it, got it. I think that that only, but then came gradually the NSS, but that's minuscule. But that's a very important constituency also with the country nurtures. So I think that that actually sustaining it today, to my mind, because we were all volunteering to be at the NCC as cadets, as NSS. So, but I think what got weakened is the parental attention to this value system, school attention to this value system, community attention to the value system, and also the overall environment of leadership. What kind of leadership is, and also the kind of agitation saw, and some agitations disrespect flag and getting away with it, even getting away with it. So I think that's what we, whereas it was not like that during the time we were, there were nobody was getting away. They were first of all nobody was doing it by and large. I didn't see as a police officer, I didn't see a single flag burning during my time, not not during the early peak times. Whereas it was later on um, uh, disrespecting the flag, even trampling on the flag, unbearable. How can you actually tolerate it? But it's parenting at home, it's a school at home. Universities, what about universities? All right, assemblies were nurture it. What about universities? I think universities probably, some universities had their hands off it. That's not, not there, it's their own personal thing. So I think these uh, this has been the gap to my mind. We may have to revive this. School assembly, assemblies and universities can start with the national anthem, can start with the Vande Matram. It can start with the Vande Matram. After when we're calling it the motherland, why should we not sing Vande Matram? Why should we question it? I oversee somebody asked me a question. What can I do for my motherland? I said, do you ask yourself what can you do for your mother? If you say my motherland, then do you ask yourself what can I do for my mother? Your motherland. That's a mother biological and this is your mother, the place of your birth. So I think this is it. There is no, it's not their fault. I think the fault is of the elders. We did not sow the seeds. So we are trying to sow the seeds through new education policy now. But it seems some generations have already slipped. Uh, let me, you know, you talked about universities. There's a university called the Parul University where at 9.15 a.m. every day the national anthem plays. So it's across and they've got about uh, thousands of students who are residents there. So I think more universities can do that. But let me ask you through the course of your fantastic career and through various rough rides and some easy ones, uh, ups and downs, what are perhaps one or two top tricolor moments for you? Something that you'll always remember. Look, for me, I've been in love with my tricolor hosting from day one. From the school time when we used to hoist it, from the hoist it, or we would hear it on Doordarshan. And I, as explained to you in your earlier program, I would even get up on my bed hearing it's, it's a national anthem going on and stand even on my bed. That's what my father would come back as national anthem. And we would all stand up. My, I saw my parents also standing up. That was a culture. So my hosting has been, but it was a peak at its peak when I was trying the trickler, hosting it as left governor on Every 15th August, 26th January, uh, events and Raj Devas singing that anthem almost three times a day as a left governor, every time. So I think I had five years full of national anthem and flag hoisting. These were very, very precious moments. And I keep going back on my throwback when I'm hosting the flag. I'm asking not just about when you're hoisting the flag, but when I say tricolor moments is Bharat at 75, 75 years as Bharat. Some glory moments for us as a, when I say the tricolor moment. So yes, this aspect as your tenure as LG, when you're hoisting the flag, it's a proud moment. It's a tricolor moment. But when I say a tricolor moment from a larger aspect of India at 75, over the for many years, two, three moments where you felt that this was perhaps a, a tricolor moment, like it's for, for a, a Bharat moment. Anand, I have an unforgettable moment. Many years ago, two students who were documentary makers came and said, ma'am, will you do a little, little clip for us? I said, what is it? He said, it's a true story. So you're not acting. You're just enacting the true story. I said, what is that true story? He said, there was a rag puller, a woman, rag picker. She found the tiranga in a dustbin, in a garbage bin. She found it. She picked it up. And when she picked it up, she found it was torn in some places. She sat down on the side of the road, put, put, put out from her uh, old sari, took out a piece. She darned that piece of cloth. She darned that flag. 
and she put it on her shoulder. And then she started to walk. And when she started to walk, she came across some, some flag flying somewhere on the pole. She pulled that flag down and she hoisted this flag. Can you believe it? I acted it. I reenacted it. It's a true story. Imagine this. Look at the patriotic love this woman had, stitching it with her own. And she had all kinds. So by the way, this is in a film. It's a real film called The Real Salute. True. Final question, ma'am. Now, uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said that this is our Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav because we are entering our Amrit Ka. So the next 25 years from 75 to 100, 20, uh, 22 to 2047 are going to be the period of glory for us. So I want to ask you, is there a message that you would like to give to our viewers as we uh, continue to talk the way forward and we celebrate 75 years? Anand, we are a demographic dividend. The median age of Indian youth is only 28 years. And you know, Japan is 49 years. And Europe, etc., and USA is almost 43. And China, etc., is probably 37. So we are at median age of 28, 20 to be exact. I think it's 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 India is a reservoir of youth energy. And if we can channelize this energy, the, the next century belongs to us. But if we leave it frustrated, unskilled, unemployed, uneducated, not respecting the law, not knowing its history, away from its roots, no gratitude, then we are in for serious trouble. I think we have a big challenge before the political leadership of this country, the bureaucracy of this country, the parents of this country, the teachers of this country, community leaders of this country, whichever faith they may belong to. If you want to create this demographic dividend into, uh, into a demographic dividend, and not demographic a challenge. So I think if we lead, but it is not only education, it's the manner of education, the way we impart the value systems. And I, I trust that national education policy, but remember, there'll be two gen, you'll start with seeing the results, five, 10, but if it's implemented well. Now the question is not of policies only, it's about implementation of the policies, not about reform, but as uh, Amitabh said, re-reform, re-reform. Yeah. It's an area of re-reform. No, very well said, Kiranji. Thank you very much. Very inspiring words. And you put matters into perspective. It's not just about making policies, implementing them, and perhaps the, the demographic dividend of our youth. We will see the results coming five, six years from now. But that's how you do. You sow a sapling and you have to you have to nurture it. That's when it will bear fruit a few years going forward. So that's the effort yes, we need to put together as a nation. Thank you so much. Wonderful speaking with you. Happy Independence Day. Namaste. Happy Independence Day. And Jai Hind. Jai Hind, ma'am. Thank Jai you. Jai Hind.